hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to integrate google sign in using credential manager for android and uh, normal google sign in for ios in a flutter app so let's get started so this is the documentation for integrating google sign in in uh, native uh, sorry in flutter app so i will be writing lot of code uh, so this is for android using credential manager and this is for ios uh, using cocopods i think this does not use credential manager credential manager is specific to android only so let's get started on how to do this so first what you have to do is you will have to open google cloud console so i have already opened this then you will have to click on create project i have already created one flutter app as well just create a normal flutter app i'll keep the project name as it is but you can change it to whatever you feel like uh, then it will take some time to create our project uh, just be a patient little bit okay uh, i'm not sure what happened has he okay it has created our project so i'll just select it okay so here you can see my project has been selected then i will go to uh, library oh not library sorry i think we'll have to go to credentials again this all things are documented in the documentation so here you can see we have this credential so just click on credentials and here we'll have to click on create credential so first we will create it for android select oauth client id and here we will have to call configure consent screen and here we will select external click create here give your app some name i will just name it as my awesome app here you will have to enter some uh, email id so i will just select the default one here you can configure your app logo if you are trying to deploy it to uh, google play store and here i will just enter my normal email id so uh, you can enter whatever support email id you have so i'll just enter that i'll click on save and continue i'll just close this and here we don't here in this screen we don't have to do anything just click on save and continue here now this is an interesting uh, screen like this tells us that add user so currently we haven't deployed your our app to google play store right so if you are in testing phase you have to add some test users but what i have noticed is that even if i don't add test users it still works so in case if you face issue while running your app for android make sure you add test users but currently from what i have noticed even though i don't add any test user it still works for me so I'll, uh, here you can click on add user and enter some gmail id of your tester or whatever and but i won't add it because it works for me even without it i'll just click on save and continue and i'll click on back to dashboard then if you are trying to publish your app you will have to click on this publish app button as well uh, you can come back to this later on as well but yeah we, i'm not publishing my app so i'll just keep it i won't press it again i'll go back to my credential screen i'll click on create credential i'll click on oauth client id here i will select android you will have to give your package name so i'll just go to my flutter app go to android app build.gradle and here is my uh, package name i'll just copy it and i'll paste it over here then we require a sha1 certificate now here uh, so i just have one command for that as well i'll just quickly open my android app src you can just google it you will find uh, like uh, the command for getting the sha1 certificate now do notice that i am uh, running this inside uh, the debug uh, i am doing this for debug key right but if you are doing it for release you will have to change this value so for debug i am on mac os so the debug key store is on this particular path uh, so this android debug dot key store if you are on windows or linux you will have to search for this path you can just google it this is the alias name this is the store password and this is the key password but if you are generating a release apk you will have to change all these values okay so be careful with this now i will quickly uh, uh, cd to my uh, flutter app you don't have to cd it like uh, this is present globally but anyways just for my own sanity i do it uh, i'll go to my flutter app and drag and drop and i'll just copy this command now uh, here you can see this is the sha1 certificate i'll copy it 
and i'll paste it over here then i don't need to verify ownership but if you are de deploying it to google play store make sure you verify your ownership as well i'll just click on create so this is the client id but this is pretty much useless because for android we require the web application client id so i'll just again click on create credential oauth client id select web application don't do anything just click create and here you will get the client id so i'll just copy it and i'll just paste it inside my main dot dot file i will use it later on i'll just comment it out okay next we have to do it same thing for ios as well so for ios we don't have to create web client uh, so i just click on create credential oauth client id select your ios application and here i will have to select my bundle identifier so i have selected my bundle identifier and i'll paste it over here and app store team id app store id and team id would be required if you are deploying it to apple app store i'll just click on create for now and this is my ios client id i will just copy it i will use it later on so that's it for the setup part now coming back to the code right so let's look at the uh, code for ios first so inside my flutter app what i have done is that inside main dot dot i have just refactored my home page widget so it is a stateful widget and here i have created one method channel now same identifier we will have to use it on flutter side on native ios as well as native android side as well and here i have just created two buttons on press of first button we will do sign in so i'm invoking a method called sign in and i'm just printing out the result whatever we get and on second button we are just invoking sign out method okay now if i go now all you have to do is open the xc workspace for ios inside xcode and here i have added uh, the uh, package using uh, swift package manager but if you want you can use coco pods as well so if you are using coco pods you will have to add this as well as this dependency but for swift package manager all you have to do is copy this particular url and then just go to file add package dependency paste your url over here then uh, you will see something like this google sign in ios then click on add package but here you will have to select this runner uh, i have already added it that's why this is disabled for me make sure you select runner over here as well as for this as well and then only click on add package i have already added it so won't add it again uh, once that is done you will have to go to info.plist and firstly you will have to add this client so just copy paste this but and here if you remember we have copy pasted this client id from google console so just paste it over here and for this particular value you have to paste this again but in reverse so here you can see com is first then google user client this then apps this and here you can see this is the particular value so this has been uh, pasted over here then we go to uh, app delegate and here you can see that we have imported google sign in first then uh, if uh, like i won't go to the documentation again but the documentation firstly says that we have to override this particular method so i have just copy pasted this from the documentation i have also created one extension so that we can ho get hold of the uh, root view controller so uh, here you can see that uh, also this has been copied from doc so we require this as well so just copy it and here we have created our uh, controller uh, then uh, if you want you can pass this controller over here as well but i'm using the extension so use whatever makes sense to you uh, and here we have created our method channel and here we are calling the sign in method one sign in method is called we just use gid sign in dot share instance dot sign in pass our top controller and here once we get all the values we are just returning it back to flutter side now these values are optional so you may, might have to use if let or guard uh, use whatever makes sense to you and here for sign out we are just calling this particular method so yeah i think uh, that's it for the ios part okay so for android first what we have to do is we will have to go to settings.gradle and i have updated the kotlin version to 1.9.20 so i have just opened the android folder inside android studio because i get proper intellisense then inside build.gradle i have added a few dependencies so i don't need this so here firstly i have added this credential dependencies at the time of me recording it is uh, in still in beta one dot uh, make sure you use above 1.3.0 like uh, 1.3.0 and above so here it is still in beta but i think by the time you watch it it should become stable then we have this android x credential play services auth uh, then we have this com uh, android libraries uh, google id 
and here we require this android ktx as well because we want to make use of life cycle scope for kotlin coroutines uh, rest everything is same just do a click on sync now it will download all their dependency for you then inside main activity so firstly here are all the imports so if you want you can just copy all these imports then here i have created one google id option as well as one method channel result here we are creating our credential manager here we are registering our method channel so i am using the same identifier which we used on flutter side then here we are calling the sign in method firstly we have to create this nonce which is kind of like a security thing so we are generating this nonce and using it over here uh, then here we are using google id option dot builder now this is very important make sure you use this as false uh, because if you use uh, what false means is so suppose i have an android device and in that i have uh, signed in with uh, five google accounts gmail accounts uh, now when i use this false uh, and if i click on sign in button it will present all those five accounts for me okay uh, now suppose later on i signed out then i if i again try to sign in this is still false if i try to sign in back it will display all the five google accounts to me now suppose if you keep this as true if you are running it for the very first time you won't see any google account so the uh, so when is true useful so if you are already managing state within your app that a, a, a that a user has already signed on this particular device in my app then you can manipulate this as true only if you are using any kind of state management to check if the user has already signed in or not so if uh, the user has already signed in if the if you make this as true uh, then late uh, then he tries to sign in again he will be only displayed with that one google account which he has used to previously sign in he won't be able to see this five google accounts so that's what uh, typically i keep it as false like maintaining that particular state by ourself is another hassle so i don't use it here you have to add your web client id don't add your android client id so make sure you add your own and then set auto enable is true and here we are building it then we create our get credential request then i am using lifecycle scope then we just call get credential we get the credential request which i pass inside the handle sign in method which i will show you shortly and for sign out we just have to call clear credential request and just call clear credential state pass our request now for handle sign in the first is for passkey we are not using any passkey second one is for password credential i am not using that as well third is the important part google sign in so here you get the google id credential from that you get the google id token and from google id token i get the personal id which is the email actually uh, and this is the display name this is the profile picture and here you can see i'm sending back all these details back to flutter side there are more uh, properties as well which you can play around in your own time so i don't want to unnecessarily drag this video but in case of error i am just sending error back so yeah that's it uh, for the android part as well okay guys so here is the output for ios now the output is blurred because i don't want to show it my i don't want to show my email id to you so here you can see if i have the sign in button if i click on it uh, I will just click on continue over here and it opens an in-app web browser for us. I have already uh, signed in uh, using a Gmail ID. That's why it is showing me the email ID which I previously used as for sign in during my practice. So I'll just select that particular Gmail ID. I'll just scroll down, click continue. And here uh, you can see that it has printed all the details like uh, uh, the email ID as well as the uh, uh, or name as well as the uh, id of our uh, gmail account so yeah that's it so here is the android output now again the android output is blurred so if i just click on sign in uh, here you can see that it is able to display all the uh, like um, accounts which i have signed in on this particular android device so i'll just say select the first one and if i just show you the console log i am not using flutter run but you can use flutter run as well i am directly running it via android studio and uh, okay where did it do so here uh, the output is printed again i know you can't see the output but trust me it works fine uh, so yeah that's it thank you for watching bye